another one. This topic says, I hate writing test cases. I have been doing QA for around 13 long years. I am very good at what I do and I am currently a QA lead. Okay. However, I noticed that since like two years ago, I got into agile teams and I no longer document my test cases. I just go about testing acceptance criteria and I do it on the fly. I do a little checklist to guide me through my test, but I just don't have the inspiration nor the patience to go into JIRA or say a do and document my test cases in any different folders. When speaking about test cases to my team, I explained that I would only document the regression test cases since these are the test cases I would run again. And since we're on an agile team, I sort of negotiated that early in the project that I will only focus on documenting regression test cases. They were okay with it. So my question to you guys is, anybody else on the same boat as me? I keep it very light because, and sometimes maybe explain how I tested a, spe a specific user story if I feel I should document in the comments of the story. But other than that, I'm just not documenting like I used to do a while back. I hate it here. I want to go home. This is crazy. This is absolutely insane. So you're telling me that, and this whole 13 year thing, I don't know, but that's got to be the, the most selfish perspective that I've ever heard. So when I document test cases and test scenarios and test plans and all that, I don't do it necessarily for me, right? It, it trust me, it, it helps me tremendously because if I have to come back to it after, um, two days. I need that test plan. I need those test cases so I can um, remember what I did. Right. But to add to that, it's more important for me to document for the team, to document for any QA testers that might be added onto the team that I don't have to like hold their hand and teach them everything all over again. And there's going to be new QA testers. Like, I'm sure you've had new QA people in your 13 years as a QA, um, your 13 years and currently at a QA lead. Might be time to pack it up. You know? And for a product owner and a scrum master to agree to, to this, for the developers to agree to this, for your, for your QA manager to agree to this? Although the QA manager might not be on the Agile team, but like writing test cases goes beyond Agile. It goes with being a, a valid and adequate QA engineer, QA tester, QA analyst, whatever the title is, right? You should be documenting um, how to test the functionality. Uh, of course, there's going to be regression tests, but... The test there needs to be test specific to the application that you're build that you're building. I remember two times, two times that um, how documenting our test cases pretty much sa saved us. One with the lawsuit where we had to submit the test cases and the test run results to the lawyers like, oh, every week or every two weeks, something to that extent, generating reports and all that type of stuff, right? If we didn't have the test cases documented, we would have been screwed. But we did. And we sent that. 
every single time. Like like the, the when I was telling you the fourteen hundred sites three times a day, that was a document that was a documentation that we used to show that we were in compliance. Now another company where we started to um, sell our software, like where it could be installed on prem. The clients wanted to see our test cases, our validation. So the same way we had to print out the, not print, but we had to um, generate a report that had the test cases and the test run execution status to show that at the releases, we actually ran the test cases that we had. And then we had different folders for these test cases are for, um, these test cases are for this feature implementation and these test cases are part of the regression. But that's what we did. I'll say like many times test cases has, has um, saved us. So I think you're putting yourself in a very dangerous spot and putting your company in a very dangerous spot. And you're doing a disservice to any new person that joins the team. Whether the, the development team, your agile team, your scrum team agree to it or not, um, it's, it's bad, bad, bad practice. Very bad practice. I couldn't even, I couldn't imagine as a, as a Q, as any level of QA, right? If I'm working on a particular software on a new feature, I have to document what's going on. How do, how does it work? It, I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is wild to me. See, and, and this is the reason, right? This is the reason that. For so many, like for so long, for so many people, right, QA would get a bad name because we have one person talking about a low stress job, have another one talking about um, not wanting to write test cases. At least when they was looking for a low stress job, they knew they had to write test cases, but you've been doing this for 13 years and after 11 years, you don't want to document your test cases? And because the developers and product owner and, and scrum masters, they don't really do QA, they don't know any better. So when you tell them, oh, I'm going to do this, they're like, okay. But why didn't you tell your manager that? Why didn't you tell your director that? Why didn't you tell the CTO that, that you're not going to document test cases? I think you're being sneaky. You are being sneaky. What a shame. And this is what gives us a bad rap. This is what gives us a bad rap. If I had a um, a QA, not sure the word I'm looking for, but you'd be you'd be kicked out. You'd be excommunicated, not writing test cases. That'd be like the first bylaw. I will write test cases, and you'd be get the boot because it's. You're doing such a disservice to your company, to your teammates. What if you're out and they need to be able to see the test cases that you've worked on and do some executions, right? Let's say something happens to you. You get sick for a week or a month. You don't care about your company. That's what, that's what that tells me. You're looking for the easy way out. So, well, it is what it is. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.